فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم So kalam is what brothers Kalam is is sound Kalam and lafz are synonyms. It's sound. It's sawtan, mushtamilan, ala ba'd al-huruf al-hijaiyya al-lati tadda'u bil-alifi wa tantahi bil-yai. It is sound that comes from the person. Are we all together? It's sound that comes from the person with the Arabic alphabets starting from Alif to Ya Are we all together? This is what it means in the language A lot of the times when you look at books of grammar when they define what Kalam means in the language huh? When they define what it means in the language, the lexical definition, the word kalam, they will define it on their filthy belief, aqadi belief. Sah? Walidhalik Ibn Faris, and he's, because Ibn Faris and other than him, their aqidah did not get tainted. The early scholars of gram, the early scholars of the Arabic dictionaries, when they define, they have not got this polluted, this filthy belief that tampers with their definition of words. And look what he said, Ibn Faris. Ibn Faris he said, he said that the kalam is al-nutqu al-mufim. It's utterance that is understood. That's what it means in the language. Like in the other uh, individuals who are from the Ash'ari uh, belief, they believe that the speech, the kalam is not utterance the reason they do that for why they have a belief they have a preconceived notion there's something that's in their head so they have to tamper with the definition of words are you there so they will say that kalam is not utterance the reason why they want to do that is because they know that they that's going to entail that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah and Allah uttered the Qur'an and they don't believe that Allah uttered this Qur'an they don't believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks they believe Allah's speech is within him it doesn't come out just like Allah has knowledge in him just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has life they believe speech is also like that it's in him, it doesn't come out it's not something that comes out from him are, we, are you with me? Whereas Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He speaks, not only does He speak, but actually His speech has a sound to it. We believe Allah's speech has a salt sound. Based on the hadith in Sahih al Bukhari and Muslim, that this, Allah will speak the day of judgment, sawtun yasma'uhu al khalaiq, a sound that the creation would hear. Huh? The hadith says salt, sound. So now that the, they believe Allah doesn't speak, they believe kalam of Allah is what? They believe, they call it kalam nafsi qa'imun bidatihi. That the speech stands within Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't come out from him. Are we all together? Are we all together? Do you understand what I'm saying? So the question that arises here is, okay, where did this Quran come from then? If the, if the speech is in him, that we shouldn't have be, we shouldn't be able to know what's in him, right? How do we have this Quran then? If the speech is within him, it doesn't come out. How did this Quran come out then? How did we get this Quran? This is where the problem occurs from the Asha'ir al Does that is that do you get that question? You understand the question? Within themselves they differ in this view. A group of them they say what? A group of them, what do they say? That the Quran is actually the word of Nabi Muhammad. And they fall under the statement of Allah, those who said, In huwa illa 
Qawlul Bashar, Sa'uslihi Saqar. Destruction is from the, for those people who say that the Quran is a speech of a creation. Are we, are we together? The Quran is not the speech of a creation. And it's not the speech of a Bashar. So within the Asha'ira, another group came and they debunked and refuted those who said, within themselves they refuted each other. Those who said it's the Prophet's speech, they were like, no, it can't be the Prophet's speech. Because there's an ayah in the Quran that says that the Quran is not the speech of a Bashar, meaning human being. So they were asked, okay, if it's not a Bashar, and you both agree that those speech is within him, then what's your reason? What's, what's your answer then? They said, our answer is that this is the, the speech of Jibreel. That the Quran is the speech of who? Huh? Jibreel. And then this is where the problem occurs from them all. We Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe that the Quran is the Kalam of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Do you see where the problem comes from, sisters and brothers? It all goes back to the definition in which they give towards Kalam. Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, brothers and sisters, pay attention. They mention if speech, according to you, O Ash'ariya, if you believe that the speech is something that's within you and that doesn't come out, then what's the relevance of what Allah said in the Quran here? They said, where, 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 where did Allah say something? We say, look at the story of Zakaria. What did Zakaria say? Qala Rabbi ja'alli ayah. Like when Zakaria, as you know, his wife was what? She was old. He said, I'm an old man and my wife is a barren. She can't have children and I'm an old man. Meaning, I can't have children myself. And they never, we never were able to have children even when we were young. Now that she can't have kids, she's also old. Now there's an additional problem now. I myself now, I'm old as well. So how am I going to have a child? Zakaria says. Then he's been informed that Allah has the ability to do anything. And he will do what he wishes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Zakaria was, he said, okay, qala rabbi ja'ali ayah. I want to know when the time that my wife is conceived, she's having, she's pregnant, she's got a child in her stomach. I want to know, when is it? I want to have a sign. Allah then says, qala ayatuka, the sign that, to know that your wife's conceived. Now she's got a child in her stomach. Qala ayatuka alla tukallim al nas. Allah is going to make you mute. Allah is going to take away from your speech. You will not be able to speak. Are you with me? So, O oh, Asha'ira, Allah negated from Zakaria that he's no longer going to be speaking. But did he have speech within him? Of course he did. How do we know he had it with him? Because what did he say? Illa Ramzan. You're going to be pointing things towards people. They're going to say, He's mute. Allah took speech away from him. So what's going to happen? Huh? He's going to do ishara, point things. A sha'ira believe pointing at something is a kalam. Because they believe speech doesn't come out from you. Huh? They're in a problem here. The ayah does not support them. They're thinking. Does it make sense to you all? So if speech is something that's within, then speech is within Zakaria. So why is Allah negating speech from him? What Allah is negating from him is the utterance. Utterance. He won't be able to speak. He can't speak what he wants. And that's what speech to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ayah. So we now have understood. And you know, you all know that the salah, if a person does a sign to somebody, is that wrong? Huh? It's not a speech. No. Are you with me? If you push, pull somebody in the prayer and you bring them forward, all of that is not speech. Speech is when you say, Akhi, move forward. Sah? This is speech. Pay attention. We've understood that. So linguistically and lexically, what does it mean? We know now what speech means, right? What about according to the grammarians? According to the grammarians, for speech, they said there's four things that have to come together. This is, this is the definition of the grammarians that the author here has defined. Are you with me? The author's definition here of kalam is the definition of the grammarians. He said, Rahimahullah, Al kalamu huwa lafdu al murakkabu al mufidu bil wadu'i. Kalam 
according to the grammarians, it is obligatory. And yet, four things have to come together. Al-awwalu, the first is, and yakun al-lafdan. The first thing is that it is a lafd. Lafd means what? What does lafd actually mean? What's the meaning of lafd? Lafd means utterance. So there has to be utterance. Very good. Number two, an yakuna murakkaban. It has to be compounded. It has to be what? Compounded. What does it mean compounded? It has to be two or more words. Does that make sense? So the, for them, Muhammad is not a kalam. But if you say Muhammadun Musafirun, Muhammad is a musafir, Muhammad is a traveler. What are you now? Huh? Huh? Muhammad is a is a musafir means what? Muhammad is a traveler. Muhammadun Musafirun. This is speech. Why is it speech? Number one, it's a lafd. I've uttered it. Utterance has come. I've did utter it. Number two, it also is Mu'allafun min kalimataini. It's compounded of two words. Muhammadun Musafirun. So the two conditions that you need are there. Question now. If somebody says to you, Man ahu ka, who's your brother? And you say Muhammadun. Muhammadun here, is it a kalam? Huh? Man ahu ka, who's your brother? And you say Muhammadun. Muhammad is my brother. Is this kalam? Huh? Somebody asks you and says to you, Man akhuka, who is your brother? Man akhuka is a what? It's kalam because it's compounded of two, man and akhuka. Good. So, it's compounded of two or more. But your response is the one I want to ask. When somebody says to you, Man akhuka, who's your brother? And you say, Muhammadun. Muhammad. Can we say that Muhammad is a kalam? Is it a kalam? Huh? Is it a kalam? How is it a kalam? We've just taken that the kalam has to be two or more. Ayya Fatullah. Yeah? So what's that in Arabic? Hey, the taqdeer is here what? Akhi. So when the person says to you, Man ka, who's your brother? The response you gave, even that you just said Muhammad, it means Muhammadun Akhi. Muhammad is my brother. Sah? So Akhi here is hidden. The person is not repeating that again. So when you're said, when it's said to you, Man ka, who is your brother? And you say, Muhammadun, you mean, what do you mean? Muhammadun Akhi, Muhammad is my brother. So it is, it is more than one word. Very good. The third point, the third point is Ayyakuna Mufidan. Mufid. Mufid means what? Mufid means it benefits you. It means it benefits you. In other words, What is it? That the person who is speaking, the individual who is what? Speaking. He no longer has to put his point across. He said what he wanted to say. 
For example, if somebody says, إِذَا حَذَرَ الْأُسْتَاذُ If the teacher comes and he goes quiet, is this beneficial? People are going to be like, what? Is he going to give us a gift? Is he going to get, is he angry with us? Is he, is he, so, so the one who is talking has no rights to stop at this point. Because the people who are listening are still waiting for the response. What's going to happen? So the sentence, even that though it has what? إِذَا حَضَرَ الْأُسْتَاذُ It has three words there, but it doesn't benefit. It doesn't. It doesn't benefit. But if somebody says, إِذَا حَضَرَ الْأُسْتَاذُ When the teacher comes, أَنْصَتَ التَّلَامِيدُ The students are silent. Good. The students are silent. That's good. MashaAllah. Huh? Are we all together on that? In other words, the sentence has to be complete. Last but not least, كَوْنِهِ مَوْضُوعًا بِالْوَضْعِ الْعَرَبِي The next one is الْوَضْعِ الْوَضْعِ means what? The grammarians when they say وَضْعِ They say it means one of two. There's two, one of two. The last condition, the fourth condition for a kalam is what? الْوَضْعِ What does الْوَضْعِ mean? الوضع means this word that you're using is used in the Arabic language. So for them, uh, they don't consider kalam sidatai. How are you in Somali is not a kalam according to the grammarians. The reason why? Because it is not Arabic. It is not Arabic. And since it's not Arabic, it's what? It's not what they look at. Grammarians don't call that kalam. Huh? The grammarians don't call it. They don't see that to be kalam. Kalam for them is what? It has to be Arabic. That's one meaning in what they say when they say wada. The second meaning that they use for the word wada is that the individual who is saying these words is saying it deliberately. Or he's chosen these words. Huh? If somebody's sleeping in bed and he's he is uh, He's dreaming, uh, and he says something in his dream. Uh, he says something in his dream. He says to his wife, I'll take you to Dubai. Yeah, in his dream. In the morning, she can't wake, she can't wake up and say to him, you promised me you're going to take me to Dubai. Why? Because this is not considered a speech. It's not a kalam. It's not considered a speech. Why is it not considered a speech? Huh? Why is it not considered a speech? Because the person did not deliberately place these words together. It's not wada, according to the grammarians. It's not speech. Very good. Inshallah ta'ala, five minutes, ten minutes, ten minutes. I'm going to give you guys exercise. You do it, we go to the next chapter. Exercise like that, every part. Okay? So write the exercise, inshallah ta'ala.
The first one is come with come with example. Everybody has to come with three examples of a complete sentence, a kalam. Okay? Which all of the four conditions are present. Three examples, each person by themselves. Everybody has to come with three examples of a complete sentence called a sentence that meets the four conditions of kalam. Three sentences. That's the first question. The second question is What's the definition of a kalam? Number two and number three. What's the definition of lafz? Four. What's the definition of mufid? Five. What's the definition of murakab? Six. What's the definition of al wada? You have 10 minutes, inshallah ta'ala. Take the question from the person next to you, inshallah.
Cara. Okay, inshallah ta'ala. You guys finished? Should be finished by now, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to the uh, we're going to the Anwa'ul Kalam. Have you guys finished? Or has everyone finished? Huh? Okay, Anwa'ul Kalam. The author Rahimahullah he talks about Anwa'ul Kalami, the types of speeches there are. قال وأقسامه ثلاثة اسم وفعل وحرف جاء لمعنى. We're now going to speak about um, the types of kalam, the types of speech. The author here is wrong to say أنواع الكلام, the types of uh, kalam, because the types of kalam is three, but it's not these three. Are you with me, brothers? The, the author here, the Anwa'ul Kalam that he brings are not Anwa'ul Kalam. The Anwa'ul Kalam are three. Are you there, brothers and sisters? The Anwa'ul Kalam is actually Mufrad, Jumla, and Shibu Jumla, which we will be speaking about, inshaAllah ta'ala. That's the three types of Kalam. These types of categorization that he's mentioning, which is Ism and Fi'il and Harf, is Kalima. Are you with me? I want you guys to look at this inshallah ta'ala. The reason why we say that the kalam and the kalima is, is important. Look, Muhammad. This is kalam. Are you there? Both of them together is what? It's kalam. This is a sentence. It's a jumla. Are you, with, are you with me? So the kalam falls on a sentence. What he should have said was what? What he should have said is what? Kalima. This is kalima. This is kalima. In this sentence, there are two kalimas. What are those kalimas? Ism and another ism. Does that make sense? But with the kalam, you can't say there are two isms. Because together, you have to take them together. Does that make sense? So the categorization here is meant to be kalima. Does that make sense? Yadhabu Zaydun ila al masjid. Zayd going to the masjid. We have all of this together is what? All of it together is what? It's a kalam. But if I ask you, Yadhabu, what is it? Yadhabu is a kalima. It's a kalima. Zayd is a kalima. Ila is a kalima. Ila al masjid is a kalima. Each kalima is what? Yadhabu is a fi'il kalima. So it's a fi'il. Zayd is a what? Ism. Ila is a harf. Al masjid is a ism. Does that make sense? So which ones can you say ism, fi'il, and harf for? Is kalima, not ikalam. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So this taqseem of the author here, that's why he is wrong. 